Now, I know that life is stressful, but I say to you that part of the stress response is also the food that you're eating. In this overview, we will delve into the insightful perspectives of Dr. Pradip Jamnadas. Dr. Jamnadas, a renowned expert in his field, offers a compelling examination of the physiological and psychological impacts of our dietary choices and lifestyle habits. You are made to fast, by the way. I mean, I do this, I say this every day, that your body was supposed to have a homitic stress on it. A homitic stress means some sort of a stress. 20,000 years ago, what was the biggest stress? Not having enough food. So one day you eat, one day you don't eat. One day there's plenty of food, next day or two there may not be enough food. Okay, so your body was made in that environment and therefore your physiology is also one where you take calories, then you don't take calories. So then you clean up, you build, you repair, and, you, and then you clean up your act, you, you get a chance to repair your body. That's what it's supposed to be in. So that's what a cactus is, but you eat in a rainforest. So what about these processed foods? So nature pre-wired us that if you see lots of calorie rich foods in the survival era, it goes to the dopamine center. And the dopamine goes, aha, I got it. I'm rewarding you, feel good. That's why you feel so good when you eat junk food. Because you're wired for that. But to, it doesn't know, the brain doesn't know the difference. So I'm gonna show you here. And we have calories everywhere, food is available all the time, more caloric dense than it was 20,000 years ago. Lots of sugar, beets, cane, processed foods, without other components such as fiber, basically naked calories that we have today. And I mentioned earlier on that there are other things that can also affect the, uh, the brain function. So let me explain something. Overeating down regulates the dopamine, opiate, serotonin, and the cannabinoid pathways in the brain, reduces cognitive function, and increases the stress pathways. So let me explain all this to you. So along comes the sugar, and you take it in, it goes straight to the dopamine center, and you get a little surge. Ah, oh, I feel good. You rewarded yourself, you feel fantastic. Next time you eat the sugar, it's gonna take a bigger amount of sugar, larger load, to get that same rise more and more so you develop tolerance so now it takes more and more to feel good and that's how you become addicted to it now the body anytime you get something there's a counter regulatory mechanism in the body so if you're getting the reward then guess what you're going to pay a price and what what price are you going to pay afterwards so it's a seesaw right so you get some some reward because you ate all this well guess what there's a build up of chemicals in your brain that are going to do the opposite thing, so that eventually get balanced. So the good, you're gonna feel bad also. So there's a time lapse in which those chemicals that would make you feel lousy, depressed, tired, sleepy, all those molecules accumulated as the counterbalance. But if you still keep giving yourself a high, high, high every few hours, these on this side just continue to accumulate. This was beautifully illustrated in a book um, it's called The Dopamine Nation. And I encourage you all to go and read this book. It's fantastic. But it shows you how the constant dopamine hit that we are getting from constantly eating processed foods and all those calories is causing this dopamine center to become l more and more, more less tolerant. So you need more and more stimulation and you build up all these chemicals. Now what happens is if you don't eat that, you've got all these chemicals that are built up which are the opposite of reward you feel lousy, you feel depressed, you feel irritable, you can't concentrate on anything. You, 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 basically, you're paying the price of that, that you just had the reward, 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 reward. And why do you get all those rewards? One, you ate the wrong foods. Number two, you ate them too frequently. As we've just heard from Dr. Pradip Jamnadas, the relationship between our diet and brain function is both intricate and impactful. His insights into how processed foods and sugar consumption can affect our dopamine levels and overall cognitive functions are enlightening. Moving forward, Dr. Jamnidas will delve deeper into the physiological effects of these dietary choices and explore strategies for mitigating their negative impacts on our health. Stay tuned for more of his expert analysis and recommendations. In a true addiction, what also happens is that there are, chemical, there are electrical pathways in the brain that connect 
from one part of the brain to the other. So the, the dopamine center has rostral connections that go to the prefrontal cortex, for example. Now, if you're an addict, do you want to have a lot of insight? Does the body want you to have insight into your addiction? That, oh yeah, I'm an addict and I, I, I shouldn't be doing this and this is wrong and, and I'm feeling this. No, it doesn't want you. It wants to make you dumb. So what it does, it down-regulates your prefrontal cortex. So when you're eating all these foods, it's just like a junkie who's taking cocaine. He doesn't know. He's got no insight because he's got no frontal lobe function. He has no reasoning power. He has no willpower either to stop because his brain has truly changed as a result of the addiction. There are true structural changes and biochemical changes in his brain because of this addiction. Now, whether you're taking cocaine, amphetamine, heroin, cocaine, oh, I already mentioned sugar, preservatives, all the same. Caffeine, all the same. They go to the same center. The brain doesn't know the difference. So the after effect is the same thing. You get that addictive effect. Frontal lobe function goes down. Your entire brain has actually truly changed. And this is the problem that I'm seeing. And hence, that's why when I question these people, this is, I did my residency and we used to see drug addicts. And these guys are behaving like a drug addict. I never believed it until I started reading this book. And this book was all about addiction. And I said, oh my God, this is real. I didn't believe it. I did not believe this was possible until I started reading about it. And now it is so well established, but unfortunately it's gonna take years before people realize this. So the cognitive impairment causes the cravings. You crave, you crave for it. And you can't learn and memory, memory is affected. Guys, this bothers me about sometimes what we're seeing in our schools as well. We need to be careful what we're feeding our children. Because if this is true, then the memory abilities are going down, the cognitive functions are going down. This bothers me a lot. And decreased attention span has been noted in binge eaters as well. Loss of impulse control. This is, this is very, very serious stuff. So the cues, a small stimulus causes a surge in the neurotransmitter centers in the brain. So uh, you even think of food and you get that response in your brain. And they release these hormones, orexin, leptin, insulin, and um, even advertising of foods, you see it, and that's your cue. You're a robot, and you go for it. Or you get home, your arms stretch out for, the, for whatever your fast food is, and you, just, and you just start eating. And then you say, wait a second, why did I do that? It's an automatic motion. Even the motion becomes automatic. In conclusion, Dr. Pradeep Jamnadas has provided us with a thought-provoking exploration of the significant impact our dietary choices have on our brain function and overall well-being. His insights underline the importance of mindful eating and the potential consequences of processed foods and sugar intake.